What is up you guys, it is Hamid Abdul here and today I am back with a Unity tutorial uh, that actually shows us how to restrict our camera and control our jump. So without, excuse me, long last, let's hop right into it. So pretty much you're gonna, you're gonna think that I'm this, I'm so stupid. What I'm about to show you how to fix it, you can literally do it within five seconds. So go to your player, underneath go to the rigid body, change the go to the gravity scale rigid body 2d gravity scale type in five change the go down to your player controller script change the height to 20 let's press play and get a feel for that it feels so much nicer realistic i love it and yeah that's literally how you fix the jump so i feel like an idiot but um in on to the next goal for this video, which isn't isn't that hard either, is going to be restricting our camera in the Y axis and limiting the um, motion, the movement in the X axis. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create uh, an empty game object. So Control Shift N, or you can just go to up to component and go to our no game object, create empty, and let's name this level start. And then what I'm going to do is reset it. We're going to give this a box collider 2D. And then we're going to put the scale size in the Y axis to 10. And what we're going to do now is move this up to about where it's covering the width of the camera. And then we're going to go and bring it over here. Oh, another thing for the purpose of this video, I've noticed that our camera covers just about all the um, ground that we have it created. So before we do anything else with our level start, let's go back to, let's go to our environment and let's go to our ground and let's just extend this, let's say 50. And let's just bring this to where about the same where the camera ends. So that's, that's, that's what you want about where the camera ends and it's I would rather be a little over than a little under because then you will just have gaps that the um, player the person playing your game is seeing so it's okay if we go a little over it's not the end of the world uh, but just because I'm like OCD let's let's make that a little as close as possible let's say 12.2 12.2 oh, that's actually worse let's say 12.7 uh, 12.66 there we go 12.66 for me and if you just followed me throughout the whole entire tutorial these transforms are gonna be the same but if you kind of done your own thing and haven't resetted uh, your axis or anything or I mean reset your positions accordingly to how I have no biggie what you what you just need to do is make sure your camera is about your camera is about the same size. Uh, your ground meets the end of your camera, and that's all. You, just like when you watch your um, game playing, you want to make sure that the ground is where the camera starts, or just close. And then, like I said, it's a better to go over than under. And then let's go back to our um, level start game object. Let's create. We created the um, box collider 2D. And what we're gonna do now is just negative 12.7. Um, forgot the decimal. 12.7. I'm I'm going to leave it at that. 12.78 maybe. 12.78. You have this little bit of lee leeway room. And just so we know what we're looking at in the scene, and voila! Now we have a little nice thing. So let's conf. Let's duplicate this, control D, or right click, and duplicate, and then we can go and rename this to level end. And for the purposes of this video, I'm not gonna drag it all the way to end of the level. What I'm gonna do, I'll press enter so that the name will change. What I'm gonna do is just probably like right here. And yeah, so now, I'll go to your main camera, go to add component, and type in camera script, or whatever you want to name your script. 
that we're about to make for our camera. Go to create an ad. Okay, we're actually gonna be, wanna keep these two functions, uh, the start and update function. So, just fix my brackets because I'm OCD about that. Uh, let's go and make a few variables, why not? Um, let's go to public, transform, up, oh, not track reference, transform, if I can spell, and player, lowercase, or capital case, or won't suffice, but I just prefer to keep a lowercase. Go to public, game object, level, start, and then public, can't spell with this in my hand. Uh, public game object level end. And then I'm gonna make some private variables float cam posh, which is just a shorthand variable for our camera's position. And float min. Oh, that's not a semicolon. Float max. Alright. Now with this, what we're going to do, uh, if you remember how I said in like just about every single video, variables not defined are by default just made private. And I think that's just inherent with the C sharp language and a bunch of other languages like um, Visual Basics and whatnot. Um, so what you're going to want to do is go to your start function and in here we're going to define our min and max. So let's go min equals level start dot transform dot position dot x that is our x axis plus uh, what we want what, in these variables what we're going to do is basically we're setting the absolute um, minimal X value that our camera will go to in for in terms of going to um following the player when we get it to follow the player in our update script in our update function but before we get there we want to define our mix our min and our max but basically what that is it's gonna be the it's gonna be the position of the level start game object in the x-axis plus the distance from the level start game object to our where our camera is at now so if we go back to our scene and we go to our camera our camera is at zero and you go to your level start and it's and its position is negative 12.78 so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play it safe and I'm gonna say plus 12.7 F semicolon and basically what that's gonna do is our camera's gonna stop, and our player's gonna not be able to go any further because of the box collider 2D, and therefore it gives the illusion that you know, go right. That is the start. That is the start of the game. You cannot do anything else. And we're just basically clamping that to where the camera doesn't go past it, and the player can't go past it. But it won't render or show anything before it either, which will suit us well. And we're gonna do the same thing. Just do level end dot transform dot position dot x minus this time it's going to be minus 12.7 f and even though we have our um level end object not where the actual end of the level is we can just literally change it later and it'll still work because this is constantly updating and it these variables are going to be determined based off of the um, variables here that we have to fill in with a component and the inspector which we have yet to do so so let's finish the script and uh, to get the camera to move is relatively simple and some of you are going to question why we didn't divine, define cam posh yet but what we're doing we're doing that in the update function not the start update function so cam posh equals player dot transform dot position dot x plus 7.6 f 
And basically what this does, I should probably leave comments. I should probably go back up there and leave comments. In. Uh, basically what this does is it, the camera, the camera's X position is now the player's is, is now like, it's now following with the player. So let's say it's following the player. But when you play Mario, Mario is not in the center of the screen. Like our X, our X um, value is with the camera is kind of, uh, Mario is kind of to the closer to the left end of the scene of this of, of the screen and even when he goes back it's it's not even you can go backwards but it's not even where it's basically the game is designed to where you go right and you jump and you, you can kind of see and the developers give you a little bit of leeway to see the obstacles coming so this is gonna add you know add space for the player to see what's coming coming next and I am terrible with grandma sir so don't judge my use of commas and basically that's just that's just that's just really smart and intuitive because you would get pissed off if every time you were you were playing a level of Mario Mario you wouldn't be able to do anything because you were in the middle of the screen and couldn't see half of all the obstacles coming and have enough time to react so yeah and one more line of code and we're literally golden so what's next is game object dot transform dot position and what that literally is this is our cameras game object dot position which it's just the game object of it's the transform and po transform position of the game object which is a, using the script so yeah the script just goes and gets it so um, new vector 3 you have three variables that you have to set, but for our first variable, we're gonna do math clamp, math f dot clamp. And it's gonna, basically, we're gonna use this to restrict our x, uh, the movement in our x axis to um, our cam posh. That's gonna be the actual value. And what that is, how we stated it here, is basically our player's position plus seven 0.6 world units forward so our camera is always going to be a little ahead of the player so the the player person playing the game actually has time to react and then we're going to want to um give them our minimum value which is our min and then our max value which is our max and then after your parentheses comma because we're not done do game object dot transform dot position dot y and then game object dot transform dot position dot z and what that does is this pretty much just keeps our this no no go back over please just stop oh gosh um this keeps our position in the y and x axis the same as what it is now so that our player's movement and the y and x and y and z axis has nothing to do with what's going to happen with our camera so with the script done before we get started let's go back to our camera and then let's drag and drop this into our script folder go back into our camera and you see our camera script and it has all the public variables that we declared but no, nothing attached to them so let's go drag our player to our player level start to level start and level end to level end level end make sure those are right because if they're not you're going to get some funky looking camera following so you play this and look there's a little bit of a gap right there if you follow my mouse and we can easily fix that by moving our um game object a little this little to the right but um see this is just basic and it's following our player and we have room to react and when it gets to the end of the level what the what it thinks is the end it stops but our player can still move so it's not this wonky looking thing there is a bit of a glitch i have to work with where i can't jump sometimes unless i just hit the either end of the um, level which 
gonna work out that but here let's pause this we know that it works at least but let's make it a little better let's go to a level start and then let's say I want to zoom in zoom 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 let's actually actually though actually though let's bring our hmm, let's make the main camera a little, move a little that way so let's go uh, point seven holy crap point two three three <laughs> Okay, uh, just something, something very minuscule, small. There's a little bit of, of a gap, but not too much of a gap because thing is, our player will still be able to go. So let's let's actually make that even smaller. So let's say point one. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. No, that's not perfect. I lied. Sorry. Let's go here. Let's actually um, bring this a little more to the right. Say negative 12.8 or 12.6. And let's go to our camera and make that 0.2. Okay. That should work. Okay. Perfect. 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 See. You have all these functionalities. I can't jump right now, which is a little weird and annoying. I think let's go to our player and see. Hmm, the jump kind of gets a little finicky. The grounded gets a little finicky there. I have to work with that. So it's where you have to like jump at the same time. Okay, and yeah, this is pretty much. It. I'm gonna work around with this um grounded because like once you start jumping you can jump but it's a little weird I don't too much care for it and this kind of works the way we intend for it so um yeah um that's pretty much it be sure to save your scene save your project and yeah um oh crap reload all save all Save your scripts too, it's important. And then, uh, no, shut up, Unity. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully, this video was, it was a long waiting, waited for. Um, hopefully, it can help you us get to the next level, because literally, we'll get to the point where, with, where I'm trying to get all the key mechanics out of the way, because I'm not really interested in recreating the level exactly. It's just recreating the main mechanics. And then being able, it's gonna be, it's gonna get to the point where after we get our um, fire flower, get us shooting flower, uh, not flower, getting, get us shooting fire, get our enemies moving on waypoints and taking damage and giving damage as, as well, and then um, controlling the transition between scenes with the, uh, with our green pipe and then doing the end of the level it's literally going to be like super mario maker where you have all these prefabs and enemies and things and you can make your own level basically but i'm going to try to recreate loosely world one one with um re mechanics that resemble the original game but um yeah that's pretty much that's pretty much it thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed and um be sure to Leave me a comment if there's something you don't understand or think that I can do better. And absolutely, just interact with me. I, I hope this was some help to you guys. Thank you so much.